Hey, this is Math 2, Unit 10, Worksheet 3, Modeling with Quadratics. And so here we have some word problems today to show how these quadratic functions kind of work in the real world and why they might be used from time to time. So in the first story, we have a story about a golfer who hits a ball from the fairway to the green, and the fly of the ball is modeled by this equation right here. G of X equals all of that stuff. Where X is the time in seconds since the ball was hit, and G of X is the height of the ball. Right, so this is our time on the x variable over here, and this over here is our height on the y side. So time is here in seconds, and height is there. Preparing to sketch. Add labels to the axes includes the variable, variable, okay, so this is gonna be our x, and height is our g, our g of x, that's our variable there, all right. Description of world, time and height, and the units, well, I'm not sure what the units are going to be quite yet, but let's just take a look at what we know. All right, so I want to do the units totally. So knowing what we know, we know that, that this has a negative in front of that value right there, which tells me it's going to be curving down, right? We know that the vertex is the opposite of that, which is at 2, 64. So with these two pieces of information, what I know is that, that at 2 seconds, the height is going to be 64. That's the height, that's the maximum height because of the curve. So I know that if I was to kind of sketch this out here, I could do one, two, it's pretty small. I'm gonna break it up, let's go every four. So this becomes one, two, three, four. Let's make this one, I'm gonna make that one. I'm gonna go one, two, three, four, make that two. One, two, three, four, make that three seconds. And one, two, three, four, I'm gonna make that four seconds right there. That's my seconds, so time in seconds. For the height, I know I have to get up to 64. So I can maybe count by fives, that might work there. So I have five, I have 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60, and then 65, 70. So it's 65, or really 64, so a little bit low there. 64 and two, I'm gonna have my high point right there, right about there. That's my maximum value at two comma 64. We're gonna start though at zero because we're gonna start with the ball being on the ground and not moving. He hits it and it goes up and then it's gonna curve back down. Now we're gonna land back over here. If it takes two seconds to go up, we're gonna assume this is a parabola, it's gonna curve. We're gonna go up and then we're gonna come right back down. It's gonna take the same time to come back here to the four, okay? So not a perfect sketch there, but you get the idea. I'm doing four because it took two seconds to go there. Again, that's that axis of symmetry, right? Where is it reflecting over the X line? Right there, it takes two seconds to go up and then two seconds to come back down. Now I'm answering a lot of questions while I'm drawing it out, but let's see what the questions are gonna be in our story. So we have description and words, we have units on our chart there. That's all looking great, okay? So no problem, everything is fantastic. Now let's see. Sorry, my pencil, I believe, is getting low on the lead. All right, so focus on the equation. Use the model of the ball's flight. What will the graph look like? Well, we're going to say for this graph, it's going to open down. Right, it's going to curve this way. It's going to go up at a point and come back down. It's going to start at 0, 0, right, and end at 4. We can talk about the vertex being at 2, 64. And that's what we get just from the equation. Scale each axis so important features the graph will show and graph the parabola, which we've done right there. We scale it the right way so it works. That's kind of the key thing there. You have to be able to practice that scaling so you know, you know, how, how, how what should I make this be? I could make it all fit within these first four. It'd just be really skinny and up and down. It'd be the same idea, but maybe I couldn't tell exactly what's happening there. Why does it make sense that this graph is only the first quadrant? Well, the first quadrant is here, right? This is our first quadrant. That's because it has to start at zero because it's on the ground and not moving. It also has to end here because it's not gonna go below um, the, the ground level, okay? So ground level is here. This is on the ground, in the air, back on the ground. So it's not gonna happen. Now, if I was measuring based upon maybe sea level and I was hitting it off a cliff and then it comes below the cliff and falls into a valley, you know, it kept falling down, you know, maybe it sunk into the ocean, then maybe I could continue there as a fun little problem. That's why that makes sense in that regard. Use your graph to identify the domain and range. Again, domain is all the x values, range of the y value. 
In this case, because of this graph, there are limitations to the domain range. So this is our x, right? Greater than or equal to. X is going to be greater than zero, but it's also going to be less than and equal to four, right? That's our x value. It's going to start at zero, end at four. The same is true for the y value. Y is going to have a limitation as well. The y can be at zero. It's going to be greater than zero or equal to zero, and it's going to go up all the way up to our maximum 64. So we have to write this one a little differently than we did on yesterday's work there. Our maximum height of the ball is going to be 64. In this case here, we would probably say 64 feet is probably what we're doing there. Okay. How do you know? We know that because of the vertex, which is at 64. That's the high point. How high is the ball after three seconds? Okay, so now we have a number that we can use within our equation to figure that out. So let's put that in there. So we're going to do negative 16 times 3 seconds is the x. 3 minus 2 squared plus 64. So we're solving for 3 is what we're doing in this part right here. So 3 minus 2 is 1. So we have negative 16 times 1 plus 64. All right, that's still 1. So 64 minus 16 is going to get you, in this case here, 48. So how high is the ball? After that, we would say it is at 48 feet in three seconds. Yep, that works for me. Looking at some other notes here, and it looks a little different. That's okay. So 48 feet is where it should be after three seconds. So we're coming back down. That's okay. So three is going to be 48. And you look at it, it's about right. Okay, looking pretty good. How long is the ball in the air? Now, this is a great question. We're looking at the time there. How long is the ball in the air? It's in the air from this point to that point. So we would just say it's in the air for four seconds. And that's what we have. Okay? So it's in the air for four seconds. And how do we know? We know because it takes off at zero and it, land, it gets its height at two. And we double that to get to the end point and that's where it stops at. So we double the vertex. Right, so two times two gets you to four. And that's the idea there. Okay, so that's what I have on my notes and let's flip it over to the next one. Okay, in the next problem you have another word problem and this number two, because I'm just doing homework stuff here, I'm gonna let you do that on your own and ask you some questions if you need to. All right, but it's another little story problem with about peaches and a tree. Again, the idea is maximum minimums. And we can see already this has a negative value there. So we're gonna be curving up and down like that. We can see that we have a vertex at 40 comma 8,000. So we're gonna have some kind of graph that goes like this. I have a point up here at 40 comma 8,000. And then you're just use that information to answer a whole bunch of questions about domain and range. Again, there's going to be a limit there, right, to those values, what it's going to be, as well as to the range value as well. All right, I'm going to turn the page over and let's look at some word problems. Some more word problems. Number three. A stomp rocket is shot vertically upward at an initial speed of 64 feet per second. Its height measured in feet after t seconds is given here. All right. Draw and sketch, include well-labeled appropriately scaled axes. How high does it go? How high is it after four seconds? All right, so here we go. We have a negative 16, so we know we're gonna be curving like that. We have a vertex here at the opposite of that, which is three comma 144, okay? So how high up does it go? That's gonna be our maximum. We know it's gonna be 144 feet is the highest that it's gonna go. Let's draw this out there. And so because we know that it's gonna start making the curve at three, that is our axis of symmetry is at three. I'm going to go out, I'm going to do, it means I have to go from zero to three, and then three to six is where it's going to finally stop at, right? So I need to come out here six. So I'm going to double it up and go one, two, three, four, five, and six. And three has to get all up to 144. That's pretty high. So let's count by Oh, let's count, what do I have? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Oh, I can count by tens. So 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 
100, 110, 120, 130, 140, 150 is right there. So to plot a point real quick, I know that at three, I'm at 144. So that's 140, that's 150. So about right there is my high point. I know I'm gonna start at zero. That's where I'm gonna begin this thing. And I take my axis of symmetry of three and I'm gonna double it. So it takes three seconds to go up and three seconds to come down. We're gonna assume that it just takes that same rate there to go up as it does down. It's not fully accurate, but that's gonna be okay. And so we're gonna sketch and it looks something like this as it goes up and comes back down. All right, so is that perfect? No, because think about this here, right? This is the speed of it initially is 64 feet per second. So it's going up at that rate, but what's it coming down at? You'd have to think about the the, the the speed at which it travels down. Does it travel down at 64 feet per second? I don't think so, but for the sake of this, let's leave it like it is, all right? So we've drawn it, we've sketched it, we're good. How high is the rocket after four seconds? That means we're gonna plug that value into the T. So we do negative 16 times four minus three squared plus 144. Four minus three is one. One squared is one. So you have negative 16 plus 144. So what is 144 minus 16? We're gonna borrow there. We have eight, three minus one is two. And we would say we're at 128 feet is the height that we are gonna be at for number three. All right, and that's what we have for number three. Okay, number four and five are some great questions that you don't actually have to do a ton of math for, okay? You have to kind of think about what these equations are telling you. So, the Sunshine Manufacturing Company produces 10 solar water heaters per day, awesome. If they were to increase their production, income from sales would increase, but so are their expenses. So, they make 10 a day, but if they can make some more, they can make more money, but it would cost more to make more. Makes sense? If they were to decrease their production, both their income and their expenses would also decrease. So if they make nine, they actually lose money. You don't make any more money, so nine's like, or 10's a good place. Since they wanna maximize their profits, they ask the business analyst to determine a profit function. The analyst estimate the profit Y from producing X units to be this equation right there. So Y equals negative X, so Y equals negative times X minus 14 squared plus 64. How many units should they produce to maximize profits? Again, this is a quadratic equation. If you wanna find the maximum, what are we gonna do? Well, let's see what this graph tells us. We see that it has a negative value there, so the graph is gonna go like this, which means this is gonna have a maximum point located somewhere about there. That maximum value is, located, is determined by using the vertex form, opposite of that, and the C value. So at 14 comma 64, that's gonna be our maximum right there. So 14 represents what? That is gonna be the maximum number of units you could, you'd make in order to maximize your profits. So we're gonna say 14. Why is it gonna be 14? Because that's where the vertex is gonna be, all right? And that's how we determine that's gonna be. So if they were to make 14 of the solar water heaters per day, they would maximize their profits. That's the benefit of using that equation there. Something similar happens here in number five. The yearly profit function for a company selling X items is given by this equation. Negative P of X equals negative three times X minus 16 squared plus 400. Again, we have a negative three there. This is gonna be curving down there. We can look at vertex form and say we're gonna have a maximum at 16 comma 400. Right, there, the 16 comes from there, the 400 comes from there. That's my curve, okay? Notice though this little, tri this little thing, that P of X is in what? Thousands of dollars. That's really important for this. So whatever answer I get here, I have to multiply by $1,000, okay? So if I got one, I multiply one times $1,000 because this whole thing is times 1,000. So what's the maximum profit they can expect in one year? Well, our maximum is gonna be at this point, that's our maximum profit, okay? Not the number of items, that's the maximum number of items is X, profit is the Y value. So based upon the vertex, we're gonna be at 400. We have to multiply that by 1,000 because it's in thousands of dollars. 
So here's four and 100. When I multiply by 1,000, I add that many zeros, one, two, three. And so what's the maximum profit they're gonna make? We would say it's gonna be $400,000 after one year, right there is the idea. Okay, so that's numbers four and five. Okay, looking at number six real quick, the profit P of X made selling phones at price X, we model by this thing. What price, price, uh, will maximize a company's revenue? So price is gonna be this number right here. That's the price, this is our revenue at P of X. So what price is gonna maximize the revenue? So this becomes our, our vertex is gonna be where? Our vertex is gonna be at 400, right the opposite, comma, 18,000, that's our vertex. We know it's curving down like this. So at what point am I gonna get that point right there? When I sell how many products can I get the 18,000 the high point? I'm gonna sell that many. So what price is gonna be? Um, we would say $400 gets you the maximum uh, profit. That's how you reach the maximum point, by putting 400 in the place of X. The maximum revenue that I could generate here is gonna be from the Y value which is gonna be the $18,000 there. What profit could they expect if they changed the price to $500? Using the same equation, what would you end up having, right? So let's look at this. If I did negative one-fifth times 500 is the price minus 400 squared plus 18,000. 500 minus 400 is 100, okay? So I have 100 right there. That's gonna be 100 squared times one-fifth plus 18,000. 100 squared is 100 times 100, which is a whole bunch of zeros, right? So we're at 10,000. So 10,000 divided by five, five goes into 10,000, two, and it's gonna go in there 2,000 times. This is 2,000, and it's negative, sorry. So negative 2,000 plus 18,000, keep the negative sign. So 18,000 minus 2,000 is $16,000. So when I do all the math and plug 500 in there, you end up saying, well, if I make it $500, it's gonna cost six, I'm gonna only make 16,000. Why is that possible? Well, if you raise the price, what we're saying is you'll probably sell less phones. It's gonna cost you more to make that many more, but you raise the price, sorry, you're gonna maybe sell not as many and your profit is less. So what does the profit function predict if the price is $800 per phone? Again, same idea we did before. And so if you plug that number in there for 800, which I'm gonna let you do, negative one fifth, and we do 800 minus 400 squared plus 18,000, that's gonna give you a new number. I did C, I'm gonna let you do D and call it a day and we'll see you next time.